Swapo did not go to war to fight for democracy. Let's, let's start right there, where it's uncomfortable. You guys went to war, and you did not go to war to fight for democracy. We didn't go to war so that we wanted to share toilets. No, we can build our own toilets. We went to war because we wanted to restore land, number one. We wanted power away from those that were oppressing us and to have it to ourselves. And I'm not talking about Swapo alone. I'm talking this as a pan-Africanist. This has been the weakness of all African governments, all of them. They went to war to fight for land. When they were there, they started organizing governments and they made themselves the kings while they were at war. And when they came back, they assumed the instruments of col colonial power systems and they started to become the drivers of the same system which had oppressed them. I'm not mixing my words. So we came back with presidents when we went to war with kings. And when they came back, they sat on the same chair that the colonialist was sitting. They became the ministers of, ministers of health to manage the same health system, ministers of education to manage the same education system, ministers of water to manage the same water policies. Even as we speak today, we still have the red line zones in Namibia where goods cannot move freely. In a country, in a country we call a country, but you cannot cross over with avocados and beef. You cannot cross this line. And you sit back and say, who drew this line? A bunch of some burros and German guys who said, no, if you allow goods from the north to come down here, then the businesses of the south will die. We are the monopoly holders of business in Vinduk. You can't allow cheap things from the north to come. And those red lines are still there. And we talk about manifestos. We talk about policy change. And yet the... The devil in the room still looks at us and to temper with it, we all want to tiptoe and put golden gloves when we begin to talk about these real issues that matter. Come with me, ladies and gentlemen. We only have three things to discuss. Number one, it is water. Number two, it is land. Number three, it is air. That's what we are made out of. And that's what gives us legitimacy to stay on this earth. Every one of us, we have a right to clean air. Every one of us have a right to clean water. Every one of us have a right to land. So we don't have all these ministries, beautiful and cosmetic as they are. Minister of what, what? Minister of what, what? Minister of what, what? Minister of what, what? Oh, you, they sound very nice, those things. You only have one ministry. Come and say after me, how many ministries? One. How many ministries? One. And that is the ministry of land. Because in the Ministry of Land, agriculture is there. In the Ministry of Land, water is there. In the Ministry of Land, roads is there. In the Ministry of Land, infrastructure and housing is there. In the Ministry of Land, mining is there. In the Ministry of Land, agriculture is there. In, if you don't have land, what are you ministering? <laughs> I mean, we can tiptoe, we can tiptoe around this thing until the cows come home. The Namibian government, through the Swapo Liberation Organization, need once and for all to look at land as the real ministry and all other ministries can wait. Even energy is founded on land. Without land, how can you harvest solar? How can you harvest oil? How can you harvest water to generate the power that you're talking about? So land is critical. Hear me as I'm looking for a landing strip, ladies and gentlemen. When we have this ideas. We are going to be spending 500 million. Congratulations Honorable Minister. 500 million dollars going towards agriculture. Oh, put your hands together. Ah, oh, wow. Now stop and start crying. 70% of that land is still sitting in white hands, so the 500 million is going to who? Where is it going? And again, before you get discouraged, as Africans Remember, you learn from your neighbors. I'm coming to you from a radical space of Zimbabwe. Now you have an option, because South African policies of land are affected, number one, by Germany, number two, by South Africa, and your own Namibian policies. Shame to say South African land, 72% of that land still lays and sits in white farmers. In Namibia, you're at 70%. 
So when you look at yourself in terms of land, just consider that you are exactly where South Africa is. I'll address you as politicians. Because of the golden gloves around land, ANC broke into pieces. UDM, Lakota's party, what do you call it? COPE, after COPE, EFF, after EFF, MK, and you go to the manifestos of all these political parties that broke away from ANC, it was one single issue, that they are not willing to address the issue of land. Namibia, you are not far from that. I see lots of young people beginning to look for change. They are not looking for change. It's because you are being gentle the way you look at this monster. So I'll give you a quick solution. The quicker you address this issue, the better. Follow me carefully. We are going to do everything according to the rule of law. Congratulations. Whose law? The same Roman Dutch law that sent you to war is the same law you are trying to implement to fix it. Now let me teach you something like a criminal. Use the law, but use it to your advantage. This is how you do it. I'm telling you a strategy like a serious criminal. You agree that we're going to buy all the land from you, but we're going to pay you only to the developments that you have done. But we're going to deduct, deduct the destructions that you have done. And we'll give you the change.